Good morning, and thank you once again for joining me on this Wednesday morning. Uh, I wanted to let you know that for the next three weeks, we're going to be leaving our pattern of using the daily devotion as our structure. You pretty much have got the gist of how to do that by now. Uh, going to page 136 of the Book of Common Prayer to find the framework, and then you'll find the readings for every day in the daily office section in year two. But we're gonna be honoring three major feast days that are coming in rapid succession, uh, beginning with tomorrow, which is the Ascension, and the following week is Pentecost, and the week after that is Trinity. So um, each of the reflections for those days are going to be taken, uh, for the Wednesdays coming up, are going to be taken from those major feast days. So today, the reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 50 to 53. Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Well, in the story of the Ascension, we have the handful of little band of disciples standing there, and uh, they're with Jesus and the risen Christ as the risen Christ, and watching him, their beloved teacher, uh, getting ready to leave. And let us remember that they had lost him at the crucifixion, regained him at the resurrection, and now they are losing him again at the ascension. So as they're standing there looking up, they watch as he disappears up into the heavens. And let us remember that Jesus had been their everything, their guide, their stability. He had pro provided a way of life for them. And with the ascension, all that was familiar to them was gone and they found themselves facing challenging times. Dr. Susan Pollock is the co-founder of the Center for Mindfulness and Com Compassion at Harvard Medical School and she writes about our, our current COVID time saying this, that for many of us being confined because of the coronavirus has been the most challenging time in our lives. The very scaffolding of our world, she says, all that we had depended on to sustain us has come tumbling down. Our work, school, friends, family, restaurants, for us, our beloved St. Paul's Cathedral. So much of what structured our lives and kept us happy is gone. Add to that profound concerns about our health and that of our loved ones. There is an onslaught, she says, of difficult emotions that go along with this. Loss, anger, despair, panic, terror. This is compounded by the isolation that many people are now experiencing being confined to their homes. And for those who live alone, and for those who are in conflicted relationships, they can feel trapped and this time then has become an emotional exile, cutting us off from nurturing and sustaining human contact. Dr. Pollock says that one way to combat the isolation we are facing is to remember what binds us together. And she says that is precisely the heartbreak that we are all facing. So she has developed a shelter-in-place meditation to help us cultivate compassion, and she says that the cultivation of compassion can help us feel connected with those from whom we are separated. So Dan Morgan is the convener and leader of our St. Paul's Mindfulness class, which is a small but dedicated group, and I'm so proud of them. They're learning to Zoom uh, in order to keep their mindfulness class going. Uh, so, Dan has provided Dr. Pollock's meditation 
You can Google the whole thing if you just Google Pollock, P-O-L-L-A-K, and you are not alone, then you can access the entire meditation. And I'm going to be shortening it today for our purposes. So first, let us start with the body. Fear and anxiety is generally about the future, while the body is always in the present moment. So let us drop from our mind, which can create spinning thoughts and anxieties for us about the future, and let us allow our body to anchor us in the present. Sit very comfortably. You may want to shake out your arms, your legs, lower your eyelids. Take a few grounding breaths and drop into the solidity of your body. Become aware of the muscles behind your eyes and feel them relax. Let your jaw go slack. And then allow relaxation to play, take place in your shoulders, in your arms, letting go of any tension in your stomach, your legs, your feet, your ankles, your toes. Just sit there in your body and breathe. Now from this place of deep relaxation, begin to bring to mind all the people in your community, your state, your country, the entire world, all who are sheltering in place. All of the millions of people who are staying at home. And in the sheltering place, know that you are not alone. You are in connection with all the millions of people who are worried, anxious, feeling isolated. Taking a few breaths, reflect on this connection. Notice what arises for you whether it be comfort or challenge or anything else you might be feeling. Now let us bring it a little bit closer to home and let us imagine all those we love and who we are separated from and let us hold those loved ones in our heart naming them specifically, sending love, sending compassion, holding them in your love, whether it be friends, relatives, all those from whom you are separated at this time. As you bring those loved ones into your heart, you are not alone. Now that you have sent love and compassion to all your own loved ones, let us broaden that out, extend that love and compassion outward to wider and wider circles all around you, connecting to more and more people concentric circles ever enlarging and reaching out into the whole world. And allow your heart to cultivate compassion. And from that place of deep compassion, here is our prayer for today. Gracious God, we ask that you hold in your own heart 
those that we hold in our hearts, our family and friends, all who are helping others endure the pain, shock, terror, and confusion, for the doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, and all who are risking their lives on the front lines, for the hidden helpers, those who are working in grocery stores, pharmacies, those delivering food and medicine, and for all who are ill, for those unable to receive visitors, for all who have been infected, for all who are in mourning, and for those who have died. Gracious God, we ask that you hold all of the suffering in your heart and bring them wisdom, compassion, and peace. Amen. Our tradition of the Ascension is the ultimate letting go and letting God. The risen Christ needs to let go of all in order to be, to go into those realms of our infinite God. So I invite you to turn to a piece of music entitled Ascension, written and performed by Mary, Lou Mary Reynolds and Louise Goldberg, and allow the ascending music to help you let go whatever is still there, clutching at your heart that wants to hold on to that anxiety or fear. Just let the music carry you into those realms of letting go. And as you let go of the anxieties, fears, troubles, allow yourself to be enveloped in the peace that passes all understanding.